So if you're like me, if you're like me, you know, I'm in my 30s, all right? I'm old as hell. I can barely walk. It's pretty tragic, to be honest. Kind of want to die all the time, but that's just your 30s. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Everybody I know that's 30 is sad. So I don't think I should be an exception. But if you're anything like me, you've been, you've been around the block, baby. I've been around the block. My wife left when I was 26. And uh, I went ham for a while because, you know, I was jaded. And the only thing that, like, made me kind of take my mind off of it was just hooking up with random people all the time. And uh, that's pretty much what I filled my life with. Now, granted, I was a bad person back then. Disclaimer. Uh, morally, a lot of the stuff I did probably shouldn't do. And what I mean by that is a lot of the girls had husbands or boyfriends. And I knew half the time. I would find out later. And I didn't care at the time. And nowadays, I think back, I was like, wow, that was pretty evil of me and assholey of me. But at the time, I just didn't care, man. I was almost, it was like taking out my frustration, like, at the guy. You know, I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why. Look, look, guys. I don't know why. But it's fine. So, but a lot of weird things happen during these excur excursions. Excursions. I'm not talking about excretions, baby. Although there was the excretions. I'm talking about excursions, baby. On the expeditions of trying to find something that I can't find because I broke that part of my brain. But, some spicy-ass hookup stories. And we're going to start with one today that is a situation I've never been in, and I have never been in since. And it was pretty damn terrifying. So I was in Las Vegas, <laughs> the city of brotherly love. Is that what it's called? I think that's a different city. It's like Boston or something. It's or Philadelphia. It's the city of uh, shared STDs. Or <laughs> they call it the asshole of the U.S. That is true because you, when you walk outside in Las Vegas, it smells like a sewer. I don't really know what that is. It's kind of calming for me. It reminds me of where I grew up in the trailer park. But that's, that. Nah, whatever. <laughs> so I was sitting there in a chair one day, charging my phone at a charging station in Las Vegas. And this girl walks by, and she is just absolutely over the top gorgeous. Oh my God. And she sits by me, she acknowledges me, and then she walks away. And that, you would think that would be the end of the story. Nah. I saw her again. Uh, uh, I think either the next day or a few hours later. And she was uh, walking through the, the area. And I ended up talking to her and getting her number. And later on that night, we hung out. So, as you can see, everything is going great. I have leveled up. My life is going well now. I'm in Las Vegas. I'm like a 6 out of 10 on the attractive scale. Still scooping up girls, baby. It's the sheer southern ch charm. You want to come home, baby, and uh, and live in my trailer with me? I'll show you how to cook a mean sirloin steak. Well done. It's going to be great. We can go crawl dad hunting. Oh, my God. I just, I, just, I just want this to happen. So, we go drinking. We go drinking. And uh, I love some whiskey. And she's drinking uh, Malibu, which is trash. Which is trash. I'll get into that later, why it's so damn trash. But she's drinking Malibu, and we go back up to the room, and we just drink it. And one thing leads to another, baby, because you know how that is. I'm, you know, I'm a young strapping lad, full of life and hope and dreams that I'll never accomplish. And also, she is maybe the same way. I don't know if she had hopes and dreams, but she was with me, so maybe not. But she was drinking, I was drinking, and we start uh, getting a little pass out -y, you know. And by that, I mean we're tipsy. We're not dying here. You know, but one thing leads to another, and we start uh we start smashing pissers. Look, ain't nothing wrong with a little bit of pisser smashing. Not nothing wrong with that. So we're going ham, all right. And about halfway through this uh this deed of the devil, um, she starts convulsing and having an extremely severe seizure. And I'll, right right away, right away, I stop and I try to hold her down. Okay? Disclaimer, this is messed up, I know. 
and she's violently convulsing for about three minutes, and I hold her down so she won't hit her face on anything. And um, then she gets up. Okay, so this is the weird part. The, the first part, definitely not weird at all, right? But this is the weird part. This is the weird part. She gets up, and she, like, scurries her clothes on and turns around and says something to me that I uh, didn't make any sense. It was like a completely, like, gibberish phrase. And she said it in a really low, like, deep voice. And then she walked out of the room. And then one of her friends somehow calls me on the phone and is asking where she is. And then a bunch of people showed up to my room, like four people looking for her, like, desperately and panicking. And then they left. And I still don't understand what the hell happened that day. But that was one of the scarier things I've ever had to deal with. And I remember in the middle of it, I was like, man, I really wish this wasn't happening right now. Because what do you do? You know, what do you do? So uh, that was a that was <laughs> a very interesting experience. OK. <laughs> and uh, I don't uh, don't wish it on anybody. It, it sucked that that happened. But the thing that was weird, look, a seizure is a seizure. It's whatever. But the standing up and then saying like something in a deep voice that didn't make any sense and walking out and like her look, the look in her eyes was absolutely terrifying. That is, uh, that is one of the weirdest things I've ever, I've ever seen in my life. So that, that number one, that was a weird one. Starting off a little light though. Have you ever been in that situation? So that's nothing guys. That's nothing. Look, a lot of people have probably dealt with this in the past. Okay, a lot of people have probably dealt with this in the past, but I went to, I don't know what you would call it, like a festival one time with a group of friends, and, um, you know, you, you dance in the festival, and everybody's doing the druggies, now granted, I don't really do that kind of thing, I don't mind the festival bits, but I don't just pop random psychedelics and start tripping balls, although I have tripped balls before. You know, and I'm not saying that my balls are long and I trip over them. I'm saying I took hundreds of milligrams of THC and thought I was flying through the universe, which does happen. I don't care what you say. All right. Anyways, I have done that, but I don't do the festival stuff where you're popping like things that look like comic books and little bitty ones and you're freaking tripping balls. But I was at a festival and we were dancing and whatnot and I was hanging with this girl so that just so happened to have not have a shirt on, which I noticed that a lot of girls there didn't have their shirts on. They were just free boobing it, which I prefer and I think should be a law. All girls free boob. And, I mean, guys can free boob as well, unless it's like a certain amount of degrees outside. Like, if it's snowing, you want, you don't want the snowflakes to be hitting your nippies, right? Because my nipples get real little. And, you know, where, where I come from, your place in society is determined by your size of your nipples. So, already, I'm like a peasant. But still, dude, I have a friend... They're like that, dude. He's a king. He's a king, baby. But, but, that should be a law. Give me the boobies, please. I, I love boobies. We, I'm a cake guy, too. There should be a law against girls ever wearing, like, uh, pants. Just asses out, baby. I'll, I'll, put, I'll put mine out, too. I'm not saying, like, only you have to do it for my pleasure. Although I do enjoy. I will also pull my ass out for your pleasure. Granted, you probably won't get much pleasure from my ass... Because it looks like two chicken cutlets nailed to a wall. But I feel like you'd still like it. It's fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> don't worry about it. Look. Look, damn it. Look. Stop. Stop. Stop worrying about everything. Pull your nipples and your ass out. So, I was at this festival. And we're dancing, you know. You know, you, you're kind of drunk a little. You might bite a nipple or two if it's right in front of you. And we go back to the room. Now, the room is like six beds in just one room, right? With, like, a bathroom and stuff. So it's like a big-ass long room that has, like, six beds, kind of catty-cornered, twin-sized beds. So as nature calls, we're back at the room, everybody's tripping balls, and this girl's hanging out with me in my bed. So what does that mean? That means she's trying to trying to slip me one. Trying to sli slip her undies off and slip my undies off, all right? And which is fine, but all my friends are in are in the other beds. Passed out, I thought. <laughs> well, they're asleep, right? No big deal. And she just, like, cocks to the side and just, you know, 
you know, s- slips it in there like a noodle. Now, granted, it doesn't take much force. I'm rocking a pinky, baby. It can pretty much go anywhere that you want it to go. Ear hole, nose hole, I got you, baby. Full pin. But she side cocks it and just starts going ham on me. And I don't know if it's because of the drugs and stuff, but she was just entirely too loud. Especially because I know, baby, look. I, <laughs> you ain't tricking me. I know. You faking all that. <laughs> there ain't no reason to be making that noise, baby. I'm just going to put this out there. So she's going ham. And um, it's like 20 minutes. I'm kind of drunk. And then it's over. I wake up the next day. I never see her again, of course. Why would I? Why, why would she ever want to see me again after rocking the pinky, baby? She leaves. You know, and everybody's leaving. We're having breakfast the next day at some crappy Waffle House knockoff. And we're all, you know, hung over. And it turns out that all my friends were awake the entire time. And was just hearing me getting clapped by Miss Festival Lady. I got clapped, baby. I got clapped. All right. And I remember being, like, real nervous about that, that very fact. So I just, uh, I was just like, you know, I didn't even hold back. I was just like, yeah. As fast as I could. Just, oh, as hard as I could, you know? But that's nothing. Oh, my gosh. A few of you guys have heard this next story. This next one's quite the quite the bad one. So, <laughs> all right, guys, look. This one, a disclaimer, I was young. Disclaimer, I was a baby. So, do not think, do not think any less of me. Because this was the first time I ever experienced something like this. So, I apologize. But, look, it's coming, and it's coming fast. She was not, but <laughs> there was a time in my life, y'all, where I was a young boy. Back when I was 16, there was a there was a social media website that was dominating the world at the time, and it was called MySpace. You know, not Face Place, MySpace. So I, you you know, back in the day, you'd add girls that you thought were attractive, and just see where it went, baby. See where it went. <laughs> so. I'm scouring through MySpace, and I find this girl that has a Coca-Cola shirt on. It's red. She looks adorable. Granted, we were both 16 at the time, so that makes sense. (laughs) Everybody's adorable, usually, at 16. Usually. (laughs) You know, I know some people that were straight-up balls of legs, but that's, that's beside the point. So, we talk a bunch. You know, I'm surprised that she even responds to me, but we start talking, and You know, having webcam conversations and stuff, as a 16-year-old boy would do. (laughs) And she's like, hey, you know, you know what would be a great idea? And I had had just gotten off at, I think, GameStop, or I had just left GameStop. I don't think I worked there yet, but I I always would stop by the store. And it was like 1 a.m., and um, my cousin was with me. And we were at Walmart, because you, you remember back in the day when Walmarts were 24 hours a day, and you'd just walk in at 1 a.m. for no reason? Yeah, that's what we were doing. So she uh, she texts me, and she's like, hey, you should just come to my house, which it was like an hour away. And at the time, me being 16 and dumb as hell, I was like, that sounds like a great idea, Miss MySpace girl I've never met in my life. Let's do this. So I start this adventure. Now, road trips were not very often a thing in my life. So it took a very long time to get there because your boy used MapQuest and took 80 wrong turns. So it took like two hours. So it seemed way further away than I actually had anticipated. It's actually pretty close. She tells me to park down the street behind this trailer, which I do. Okay. And I park behind this trailer, and she tells me to get out, walk down this dirt road, and then walk down the main highway. And she'll just meet me. And I'm like thinking back right now, telling this story to you fine folks. And I'm like, huh, that seems like a very good recipe of me being me being killed as hell. I'm pretty sure I should have died that night. Kind of wish I would have died that night. <laughs> I don't know how I didn't get stringed up and get my, my skin wore by some random guy. But somehow I made it out. But not not off scot-free, unfortunately. So, I, I park back behind the trailer and I start walking. I start walking, baby. <laughs> I'm just going to walk. It's fine. Don't worry. I'm walking down the road. Walking down the road. And like Ballard says, I'm obviously colorblind because there was a lot of red flags there. (laughs) So lo and behold, as I walk down the road, I see this figure coming towards me. And it is that of this girl, 
the actual one. Thinking back now, man, you could have really catfished and killed somebody back then. But <laughs> it was actually her, so I got lucky. But I started getting a little nervous because I was nervous the whole time because at this point I had never been even close to a girl. I haven't even hugged a girl nor kissed a girl. You know, I've never done anything. So we climb up um, her driveway, which is dirt, and uh, climb to her window. And I have to climb in her window and fall in to her room. So I'm now I'm in this uh, this 16-year-old girl's room. Disclaimer, I was also 16. This was in 2006. So don't be like, Cody, wait, you were 30. <laughs> no, hell no. I was 16 at the time. And I'm hanging, so I'm in, I'm in the room with this girl. And I can hear somebody watching TV like six feet away in the other room. And I look at the door, and it's one of those doors that don't lock, you know. It's just a doorknob, um, which I've never understood. And I'm like, oh, does your parents know I'm here? Well, hell no, they don't. They don't know I'm here. And her dad's apparently seven foot tall and 400 pounds. It could literally squish me into a ball and then eat my ass and then shit my ass out and then eat me again. But that's no, no matter. Young, my young hormones were like, you know what? Hey, you could just die. You could die for this, right? I'll just die for this because that's how bad I wanted this at the time. So we start watching movies and I'm really nervous because not only is there a girl around me, you know, there's also um, a large fatherly figure that could rip me in two pieces. So there's a lot of things going on. So for the first time in my entire life, I got uh, I got the breaking out and sweat shits. And what that is, is that's when you get a cold sweat and you start having to, to poop really, really bad. Now, I've never experienced this before, so I figured I could just p plant my booty hole directly on the hardwood floor and just keep it at bay. I could keep it at bay, baby. It ain't gonna happen. I can. I'm more powerful than the poo. All right. I'm a human being. I'm not a baby. Well, she asked me if everything is all right because I look a little bit weird, and I'm like, ah, it's fine, it's fine. But it doesn't get any better. The contractions start getting real close. I mean, like 30 seconds apart. I'm about to give birth. I'm going into labor. It's starting to get real bad. I can feel the cold sweat beads going down my face, and I ask her. I'm like, look, baby. You got to, you got, where's your bathroom? And she's like, oh, it's, it's like right out there. But my dad's sitting there in his chair. There's no way you can go out there. And I'm like panicking. Cause at this point I start to realize there's nothing I can do. Like this is coming, dude. It's coming. It's going to be coming. There's going to be a chocolate rain tonight on somebody. All right. Somebody is getting the, getting the chocolate juice. All right. Do you want some hot cocoa? Because that's what it's going to be. Is it going to be as tasty? Not quite. Depending on who you are. <laughs> well, I decide that um, there's no way I'm going to be able to do this, and I start panicking, and I just run to the window. I get up, hobble to the window, because I'm a fat kid at the time, cause, so I got to hobble, and I get to the window, and I fall out. I just tell her I'm leaving, and I just get to the window and fall out of the window and start sprinting towards the road because I don't know what else to do. I guess I'm trying to make it back to my car, my cousin's with me, and he falls out the window, and he runs as well, you know, because he's just there for some reason. I get to the end of the driveway, and for the first time in my life, I guess I had reverted back to baby status and couldn't hold it no longer, so I just rip my pants off. I just drop them, and projectile just shit everywhere, and I mean projectile. I could hear it spraying like 20 yards, and I'm screaming and stuff because... It was like the ultimate relief. And it's, of course, it's pure liquid for some reason. I don't know why that happened. And I'm like relieved, right? I'm like, well, at least there's that. At least it's over. And I turn around and look, and her window is just open. And the only light from the entire, the only light that was shining outside was the light from her window. And it was on me as I shit. So she just probably saw me just shooting out the poop. And then I looked at my cousin, and I was like, hey, man, let me get your socks. And uh, he gave me his socks, and I went and wiped. All right. And then we went down to the local Walmart and uh, bought some socks, of course. And I had to shoot I had to shit like three more times. Somebody fed me some damn x lax or something. And uh, then I went back, and even after all that, she uh, she uh, sat on my pee-pee. It was pretty weird. I don't understand how those 
chain of events happened and led to me still achieving the ultimate goal, which, you know, when you're 16 and you're a male, that's the ultimate goal, right? Like, being 30 now and going through all my escapades, I'm like, man, I don't even want to, like, hook up anymore. I don't even want to talk to people. Like, I don't, I don't even like putting in any effort. I'm just so tired. But back then, man, you die for that. So it makes sense as to why back in the day peasants would kill people because that was the only time they were going to get to clap cheeks in their whole life. So they kill your ass. They, <laughs> they'll kill you. Hey, man, I've never done this. Move aside. You getting clapped today. 